In the previous video, we discussed what the ancient Greeks noticed when they looked into the night sky. They noticed that the stars remained relatively fixed in their positions compared to each other. But there were five wanderers, which turned out to be the planets, that moved night after night after night relative to the stars, such as this one shown here moving in the direction of the arrow. Now, they also noticed that sometimes these wanderers actually didn't move in a straight line, but made a little, what I call a hairpin turn. And if you look at the planet below, you'll see what I mean. It slows down and it makes a little turn. And this is known as retrograde motion. Here I show with arrows the kind of motion that was made. Here's a definition for you. Retrograde motion, an apparent change in the direction of a planet relative to the background of stars. Now I want you to notice this word at the beginning of this definition, apparent. And that should tell you something about retrograde motion, which is that it isn't actually happening. It appears to be happening, but we'll get back to that. Let's look at this word retrograde. Retro, in this case, means backwards. Grade has a number of possible meanings. In this particular case, it best fits with the definition of pace or position. So retrograde motion is a backwards pace or a backwards motion. Now, if I asked you to go out and watch the sky night after night after night at the right time of the year, you would see retrograde motion as well. Here is a series of photos that have been placed on top of each other of Mars. This is Mars against the background of the night sky, night after night after night. And this photographer took a series of photos in the year 2003, over about a month or so, and I'm showing you with arrows the direction that Mars moved over time. This is retrograde motion. Now, if you look carefully, you might see another wandering planet in this picture. It's over here. And this is actually the planet Uranus. Now, the ancient Greeks couldn't see Uranus because you wouldn't be able to see it without a telescope. And the photographer who took these pictures used not only a camera, but a telescope. But in fact, Uranus is also wandering, just like the other wanderers in the night sky. So let's get back to the ancient Greeks, because they noticed retrograde motion, and they had to explain it. In particular, this statue here is of a very famous ancient Greek astronomer and mathematician whose name was Claudius Ptolemy. Now, although he wrote in Greek, there is a question that he may have been Egyptian and even a Roman citizen. But in any case, he wrote several scientific papers that made him quite famous, and he was considered very significant for centuries to come. The one he wrote about astronomy, the one we're concerned about, gave an explanation for retrograde motion. Now, he believed in a geocentric solar system. So what does that put in the middle of the solar system? The Earth. And he explained retrograde motion by using two different kinds of motions for the planets. One motion called a deferent and another motion called an epicycle. So let's make a drawing of Ptolemy's solar system that explained retrograde motion. Of course, we begin with the Earth in the center of the universe and the planets moving around the Earth. Here's an orbit, and he called this orbit the deferent. So really nothing new here except that he gave a new name to what we consider the orbit. But then he suggested something quite different. He added a second kind of motion called an epicycle to each planet's motion. And the planet would move around the epicycle as well as moving around the deferent. And so what this would look like from someone on Earth 
would be that the planet would move night after night from right to left, which more correctly is west to east. And then after a certain amount of time, it would move east to west, which would be the retrograde part, and then back to west to east. Now, remember, there are two motions going on here. So what would this look like from Earth? What I've done here is I'm going to make the planet a little bit smaller because it works better for my diagram. So remember, we have two motions going on here. So the planet moves to position one, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, following the path I've shown with the green arrow. And positions four, five, and six would represent the retrograde motion as seen from Earth. And so this path would continue as the planet continued its motion around Earth. And of course, the idea was that each of the planets did this and it explained retrograde motion. Brilliant. However, wrong, completely wrong. The real reason for retrograde motion is that it is an illusion. Remember, I said it is an apparent motion. In fact, it happens because the Earth passes a slower outer planet as they both orbit the sun. So let's take a look at this. Here is a figure from your astronomy textbook showing the Earth in blue orbiting the sun and another planet a little bit further from the sun orbiting the sun. So wait a minute. Now we have the sun in the middle of the solar system. So this is not a geocentric solar system. This is a helio centric solar system. Helio means sun centric we've talked about. So the real true explanation for retrograde motion requires the sun to be in the center of the solar system. Before we get to this explanation, you're going to learn that the closer a planet is to the sun, the faster it goes around the sun. So for example, this is Earth, Let's say this is Mars, which is farther from the sun. Earth goes faster. If you want real numbers, the Earth goes around about 13,000 miles an hour faster than Mars. So back to this figure. Each of these letters, A through E, represent a point in time. So at time A from Earth, we look at Mars, and we see Mars at this position against the background of stars. At position B, we look at Mars, and Mars seems to have moved, as we've mentioned earlier, from west to east, and all is good. But by the time we get to position C, we've moved faster than Mars, and now it looks like Mars has moved backwards. At position D, Mars has moved even more in the wrong, so to speak, direction. But by time E, Mars is once again moving correctly from west to east. And that is actually what explains retrograde motion. Now, I'm going to show you a short video that might make this a little more clear. So in this video, you can see that Mars takes about twice as long to go around the sun as the Earth. The Earth is shown in blue and Mars is shown in red. They mentioned that Mars is being in opposition every two years, and that means that the Earth is in a position between the Sun and Mars. Now you'll see a series of observations from Earth to Mars against the backdrop of stars and how the path of Mars appears to move, but it actually doesn't move. So here the path is moving from west to east, and then it appears to go from east to west, and then back from west to east. And this is the retrograde motion. This final scene shows an excellent series of a time-lapse image of retrograde motion of Mars observed in 2009 through 2010.
And this is showing the position of Mars on various dates. And the opposition, the point when Mars was highest in the sky at midnight, would be right here on January 29th. Ptolemy's geocentric model of the solar system held up for 14 centuries until the Renaissance, the period of time in the 15th and 16th century that marked the emergence of society from the Middle Ages into modern times. And that's where we're going next.